Simon is a first-time feature film director with Mutant Chronicles. And uh, a good friend to first-time directors is actually one of his co-stars uh, of the film, which is who is Ron Perlman. And uh, one of the first-time directors that Ron Perlman shepherded early on in his career was none other than Guillermo del Toro. And that paid off in dividends with uh, with Hellboy, the Hellboy series, which is really reinvigorated Mr. Perlman's cult status, uh, something that started way back in the day with the Beauty and the Beast uh, television series. And uh, he really is a phenomenon uh, of an actor. He's one of those guys that uh, we love to follow on screen. And uh, he he works quite a lot. He has quite a lot of uh, credits to his name. And he's very distinctive in, in every single one of those projects. Here we talk about the film Mutant Chronicles, what he likes about the character, and a few other things about the craft of acting. My understanding of, of the project, um, it was, it's kind of a big budget project made on a smaller budgeted scale. Uh, they used all the tools in their arsenal to, to, to make it look very impressive. Uh, and I was wondering, for you as an actor, uh, you've done so so much work, big budget, smaller budget. Does that dictate any any um, change in, in performance? Does it dictate different demands in your performance? No, I mean, um, you know, you you always come to the the to to the work with the same set of parameters, the same hopefully levels of engagement. You know, the circumstances change. But there are certain things that must never change, you know, uh, which is the approach to the work. Um, I, I I actually appreciate um, the underdog uh, in, in 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 these scenarios yeah. maybe a little bit more than I appreciate the you know you know being in a situation where the machine is so overwhelmingly large and unwieldy, yeah. um, and in this case. You know, watching Simon make what essentially is an amazingly high concept uh, tentpole like film with the resources he had. And I'm not at liberty to mention how much this movie was made for, but trust me when I tell you it's a fraction of what, you know, would have been spent for the same um, kind of movie, you know, um, under different circumstances. Yeah. Um, and yet the movie. Uh, I've seen it now twice. I'm, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. Never once does it look like it's breathing heavy. Never once does it look like it's been compromised or, or, or fudged, or made to look cheesy because they just, you know, on any given day got, got undermined by, you know, their lack of resources. And I, I have to give all the credit in the world for, for, you know, the. Um, the, the the high quality of of what ultimately appears on the screen, screen yeah. to Simon Hunter, you know, he took him a, a year and a half to finish the film because he had nothing to work with and he had to do everything in such a, a painstakingly low tech way. Um, but he did it, and uh, he did it in such a way that the film is is worth uh, everyone's attention, yeah. and um, that well, he's a I... filmmaker of of rare and um, unique ability. I would certainly agree, and I think it's a very impressive-looking movie. And, and so, when I mentioned a smaller budget, that wasn't—I uh, I, I was, wasn't speaking about the quality of the film because obviously it's a high-quality film. But in terms of the working environment, uh, when he spoke of it, he said that all of you were were such a tight kind of unit, and you're all in there working to, to put this thing together the way it deserved to be. Uh, did you feel that on this set that there was a, a level of kind of uh, of intimacy, like everyone was in it for a common, a common uh, purpose. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, every one of us, to a man, believed very much in in in, in the, the the ethereal, high quality, um, intelligent way that this material was being depicted, and appreciated the fact that we might, you know, be involved in in something special. So the level of enthusiasm was high. Yeah. The company of actors that were assembled were were, were phenomenal. They're um, amazing. Yeah. And and uh, you know n no egos. N n you know um, 
there was nobody out that there was you know a part of this production that was was making retirement money certainly i mean you know we were all doing this because we we believed in the material and nobody was getting rich um which makes for the playing field to be rather even and it's an environment i like working in because there's no cynicism you know yeah. the order of the day is enthusiasm and 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 devotion and the desire to help a young filmmaker achieve his vision rather than some other set of you know agendas or circumstances oh yeah um so, so what did yeah. you respond to in in this i'm i'm so sorry if i if i broke your train of thought no 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 i was done well, I first and foremost responded to how intelligently the script was written. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, I loved, you know, the, the way he solved the problem of what a world 400 and some years into the future would look like, that, that there are no longer any nations, but that now that the world has been divvied up into four overwhelmingly powerful corporations, mm -hmm. corporations being soulless and heartless and, and you know, not having to answer to any of the tenets of of the human condition. Right. Um, so that immediately got my attention. And the dialogue was smart and crisp, and the characters were compelling and sympathetic and real. And then, of course, the character that, that they asked me to look at, Brother Samuel, was somebody who I truly aspired to uh, spending time with. And um, because... He, he's such a humanist in a world that has been so dehumanized and he's got you know just this amazing heart and uh, yeah. single minded devotion toward preserving what is good in mankind and um, to the point where he's willing to you know put his own life on the line mm -hmm. so there's something quite important about you know giving, giving, being given the opportunity to play a guy like that yeah and when you speak about the character like you just did, um, tell me about your criteria with choosing roles because you've got a lot of credits under your belt. And so when you read a script, um, do, do you look for that particular character? Do you look for the company that you're, you're going to be involved in, the, the script itself? What, what's your criteria for choosing roles? Well, I think it's a little bit of all of those things. Uh, first and foremost, I gotta feel like I can play the guy. You know, uh, if if I feel like I don't have a, a strong handle on what the writer is 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 looking for, then you know I stay away. But um, so that's that's first and foremost. Um, second of all, is it something that I've never done before, and um, how engaged? do I think I can be by trying to figure out who the guy is? And that's what it is. It's an exercise in trying to figure out who the guy is. And, you know, you've got to, he's got to be interesting enough and idiosyncratic enough and unique enough to want to spend three, four, five, six months with. Um, and then, of course, it's, it's all the other things. It's like, do, do these people have a shot of making this film commensurate with what the potential of it is on the, on the page? Do they have the resources? Do they have the other cast members? Is this director equipped for... Because if you know you're going to go into something that has a, a big chance of failing, you know, you, it's, you try to avoid those situations. So right. those, that's it. That's the whole criteria for me. Um, well, you, having said that, I, I like working with first-time directors a lot because um, when I did Guillermo del Toro's film, Kronos, he had never directed anything before. And, you know, there I was getting a chance to um, participate in the emergence of what is turning out to be one of the most important voices in cinema um, that we have. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I love the idea of maybe making lightning strike again and, you know, being involved with somebody else who's emerging and getting a, a shot at being a new important voice. So... Um, I'm a sucker for low budget. I'm a sucker for first timers. Yeah, um, I think that's and I'll great. always I'll always make little adjustments, um, you know, to try to accommodate those request those requests when they come in. And you also strike me as as a, an actor who is in love with the process. Uh, you you like to work, and and I'm wondering if that speaks to your stage experience. If if you could speak a little about what you feel as an actor 
when you walk on a film set, what your extensive stage experience uh, does does for you. Um, well, I'm so far from the, the, the my early days on stage. Uh, you know, I'm I'm what I learned what I learned by the the, the, the old days in theater, which were basically in the '60s and '70s, mm-hmm. um, and a little bit in the '80s, I guess, in the early '80s, was you know just what a professional actor has to do to be ready on the day to to do what he's been asked to do. So there was a work ethic that was yeah, most yeah. strongly articulated. Um, and then there was the, the relationship with the material, you know, that, you know, you have an obligation to to do what you think the writer intended um, and to find ways to shine a light on it, do your part, your little, you know, your little part is a fraction of what is, what ends up being the whole. But you know, you, you're obligated first and foremost to 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 do the material. Um, and um, along the way, you know, you just pick up little tidbits of, you know, building character and and mm-hmm. and and the, you know the, the technical aspects of it. Just that, that that all just comes with the doing of it over and over and over again to varying degrees of success and failure. And there's a lot of failure. There's a lot of trial and error. There are a lot of things that I did that were tr- tremendously horrible that I learned more from than things that I did that were okay. So yeah. Yeah. you have to embrace the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the possibility of falling on your face and yeah. um, understand that you know, there's much to be learned from that as long as you don't crash and burn than as there is anything else you could be occupying your time with. Absolutely. Let me ask you one more question before I let you go, because I know you're you're pressed for time, and I appreciate this very much. It's a great honor to speak with you. Um, oh, thank you. A, another tremendous actor that uh, you get to work with, and the, this has a just a fantastic cast, as you mentioned, uh, is Malkovich. Uh, now, he's fascinating to me. <laughs> to t- me tell too. me your... Yeah, t- tell me your insights into to how how he works. Well, he um, he really, really, really um, has a, a completely unique way of working. Uh, you know, and I, unfortunately, he was only on this movie for two days. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, in the unfortunateness of it, <laughs> all of the scenes he had were with me. So on those two days, you know, if I was able to get any kind of window. It was I was the only one in the cast that that that, that did. Um, but I, I I I would never be able to put my finger on what John's process is. He's a very bright guy. I think I think from the neck up, he's like in a class by himself, and he utilizes that great intellect in his you know the, the imaginative the imaginative process that goes into who a character is and how he wants to portray that character. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but you know when you ask John to do a, a job, it's not going to get done like like anybody else is going to do it. That's for sure, because he doesn't think he doesn't think like anybody else. Um, yeah. He thinks he thinks very much about um, idiosyncrasies. You know, once he absorbs um, who he thinks the character is, then he thinks about behavior and idiosyncrasy and um it's a very brave way of working um yeah, yeah. because he's, he 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 likes to put himself on the finish thinnest branch of the tree and then just hope he doesn't you know fall off mm. and i love i admire guys who have those you know balls big enough to work like that yeah like so i really tightrope yeah, yeah yeah i really uh i enjoyed my two days with john <laughs> 